adapting to weather as appropriate. This week, we're off to Alaska. Welcome aboard. In part one of this Alaska adventure, we looked at trip planning. When to go? We chose August. For possible routes, we looked at the coastal route, the trench route, and a hybrid route of the trench and the Alcan Highway. For specific areas to visit, outbound we chose Ketchikan, Homer, and Denali, and on the return, Haynes and Gustavus in the Glacier Bay area. Our trip calendar covers about 15 days, and for preparations, Joe did a yeoman's job finding lodging and rental cars, while Bill and I flew approaches on the sim and planned a few cool air tours. In this video, we'll look at the weather. For these geographies with primary concern for visibility and ceilings, possible icing conditions, and of course, summer thunderstorms. We'll first take a minute to overview the weather tools themselves. For mid and long term forecasts, Bill and I use Windy on both the web and the iPad. We'll examine parameters related to icing. And also check for wildfire smoke and coastal fog as the impact visibility for approach and landing. We can easily examine how the forecasted weather parameters vary over time and also how they vary by the leading mathematical models. And the meteorogram takes a vertical slice at one location to reveal local trends over the time period. For the Rockies and Alaska, the FAA weather cam site provides an awesome real-time view of surface weather conditions. For the selected location, multiple camera angles are provided. And the camera loop displayed over the preceding time period. Even more impressive, there are hundreds of these weather cams available. We're, of course, also taking advantage of full and formal weather briefings, starting a day or two before and also the morning of a given flight. In part one, we concluded that to get from the Seattle area to Alaska, we should have a plan A1, a plan A2, and a plan B. And then, COVID restrictions didn't lift as soon as hoped, nixing plan B at least as an outbound route. Weather permitting, Plan A2, the nonstop to catch a can, still works. But what about Plan A1? A few lengthy phone calls to CBSA would indicate a simple fuel stop in cam loops remains an option. Okay, moving forward. Being an international flight, Plan A1 has a few logistics to it. Whereas the Plan A2 nonstop overflight is pretty straightforward. We've, of course, prepared flight plans for the two legs via cam loops and for the Ketchikan nonstop, both IFR and D VFR flight plans. And finally, a peek at the weather forecast seven days out. Oops. Smokey and Kamloops would be ironic 
if our inland fuel stop posed an approach challenge. Freezing levels look acceptable and a modest headwind. We might expect some precip and low but acceptable ceilings along the coast. And no surprise, it's wet along this coastline, but we might miss the worst of it. Now three days out, how do we look? Modest precip and reasonable freezing levels. Mostly moderate crosswind. Some cloud cover. And low bases and route. Cloud layer rather thin. Wow, seems the southern BC smoke cleared quite well. How about local surface conditions? As forecast, we miss the current wet weather in Ketchikan. What if we had to shoot an approach on a day as wet as today? Two miles and 800 foot ceilings, still doable. We'll button up and publish this video now, but rest assured that several times a day, Bill and I will be studying the weather cams and briefings to make final calls on when and where to launch. And we'd love to have you join us on the adventure. You can follow our real-time flight track, check out video shorts that we plan to post en route, and importantly, Please subscribe and click the bell for notifications on episodes to come. Thanks for flying with us.